one of the perks of life. That's one of the good things. It's not a perk, like I say. It's not a perk. It's not free. It's not free dessert. It doesn't come out of free dessert factory or something. It just ain't fucking free. Just go with it and enjoy yourself on that level anyway. Well, like I said, I don't have any problem. It's here and it's a I'll take it. I'm going to grab whatever I can get. Um, but I'm not going to deny that there's still work to get done here. This, there's stuff that has to be done. We can't just be preoccupied with this stupid, frivolous, I want crap. And we have to take more responsibility for the I need to do thing. Uh, you think it's all ego crap? Well, it would appear to be, but there are some quite saintly people in, in this world who naturally like caring for other people. Those yeah, people. well, then what are seven, eight, nine, ten of people? So you got 99% bad apples in the pie. 99% bad apples in the pie, and you're just going to make a rationalization and say, well, this is 1% good. And I could argue that the good people aren't really good, <laughs> you know that they have their own psychological problems and that's why they're doing the do-gooder thing because they, they have an ego problem and they, they need to do it to feel good about themselves. They need to do this lovey thing or this giving thing because it makes them feel valuable and worthwhile because they, they hate themselves or some other psychological problem. So let's not pretend that there's a big pile of that in the do-gooder psychology. Uh, might even be part of my psychology. I don't know. I mean, if I really calculate through it, maybe there's some guilt running in there. Maybe. I think I'm above it now, but there could be. Um, so, yeah, let's, you know, let's not pretend that even the good do-gooder thing, you know, you can, you can dissect that and find some worms in there. Work in the caring industries. There are all sorts of selfless good things. What about are these people? Why don't we talk about them? You know, there are some really lovely people in this world who are naturally nice. Not yeah, I know, but nobody does that, you know. I mean, it really isn't how we perceive the world. You, you, don't, you don't take the minute exception and describe something based on the minute exception uh, in that class. So, whatever. I don't say the minute exception isn't good. I'm just saying it's a minute exception. It just isn't the way you describe the functionality of the human race is by finding the, th the, the ten exceptions to the norm. Actually, Kai, they give up their lives for good causes. I mean, think about them instead of ranting that nobody does anything. Because a lot of people do do as much as they can. And the majority of people do exactly the opposite. They pull the lever in as selfish a way as possible. I can save ten dollars on my taxes. So what if a few people die? <laughs> I'm pulling the lever. I mean, get real. Uh, I'm just talking about the real circumstance. You want to talk about the fantasy circumstance? Okay, but that's not the conversation I really want to have. Now, I just want to say, when I was about twenty-something, I had this huge social conscience. I wanted to help the sick and needy, an overwhelming desire to be safe. <laughs> right, so what I did was I went to work with the tramps in the east end of London in a soup kitchen and fed them soup and bread. <laughs> now, that made me feel wonderful. I felt like a saint, you know, benevolent, caring for these poor, sick, cold tramps. You know, I got a real ego trip out of that until one day one of these tramps said, People like you, you just come here for a short while and feed us and then you go back to your lovely warm house. You make me sick. <laughs> I thought, oh, well, he's right, you know. I was just sparing a year of, of my life. And then I went back to normality. But, you know, I saw his point. Anyway, later on, for whatever reason, I have become involved with alcoholics uh, because my boyfriend is a severe alcoholic who is now off the vodka successfully. Anyway, so I went to a few of those Al Anon meetings to try and get the hang of the whole thing 
you know. And at one of these meetings, this alcoholic came right up to my face and said, Women like you make me sick. You think you can help an alcoholic. Well, you can't. You're just a do-gooder. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just, you know, you run into this stuff all the time. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, these are all complex problems. I mean, it's no two alcoholics are alike, uh, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, what's going to what's gonna be enough of a little train of thought to keep some people straight? Other people are going to need a, a bigger train, a <laughs> better train. So, oh, I said, well, who can help? Alcoholics then, and he said, Only alcoholics anonymous. They need to come here. We're the only ones who can help them. We're the only ones who know. So I said, Fine. <laughs> so I didn't go back there anymore. Anyway, what I'm saying is, is Alcoholics Anonymous does help. It is the best thing I've ever, ever known. Really does help people. Yeah, I mean, good and bad. I mean, I, you know, I mean, we all have personal stories. I mean, I saw a guy who was, yeah, okay, for seven years it worked, but then when it stopped working, it stopped working big and bad. Um, and then other people, you know, it gets into their whole brain and they get the whole religion thing, and then you're almost like wish, <laughs> they almost wish they died from alcoholism because it's like the person they became was such an asshole that it was like, who the fuck? Um, you know, so I don't know, you know, it's, it's a tricky subject. To, to me, it seems really, I mean, the obvious way to stop somebody from drinking is to whap them in the head and the stick. You just hit him in the head with the fucking stick. And you say, look, you motherfucker, you're an unproductive piece of crap. And you don't stop being an annoying sucker of people's life. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to cut your fucking head off. And you see if that works. I don't know. It didn't work for me. I mean, I stood at a guy's door with an axe one day, and that didn't really get to him either. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, if there's anything on this earth that constructively is doing some good, it's alcoholics anonymous, in my opinion. I just wanted to say that because. Yeah, it's okay. Like I said, I'm just, I'm just more of the. Yo, know, what you fucking asshole! I mean, you really have to be a complete asshole. Well, I just have the, you know, I mean, if I was a psychiatrist, I'd have a, I'd make sure my office was on the tenth, you know, the tenth story, and uh, you know, yeah, I'd have a little window with a ramp, and uh, there'd be a lot of assholes, you know, going out the window. I mean, these people, they want to, some people are just way too high maintenance. You know, they just they expect everybody to take care of all their fucking bullshit. Uh, you know, and this alcoholism thing. I mean, the, the root of that is a selfish motherfucker. I mean, that's what I found anyway. Every fucking alcoholic I ever knew was one selfish motherfucker. Like you, I think, oh, no one's doing anything to help anyone. It's all horrible. But that is one organization that is working does work. Anyway, so what is the point of your blog, really? It's like a lone voice crying in the wilderness. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just a rock through a window. Or maybe it's a kangaroo climbing a tree. Or maybe it's a platypus counting to four. Yeah, whatever. And I agree with what you said, everything. So the only hope is to get involved in just one thing. And uh, yeah, more advice. Like I said, what the fuck? I'm on a communication network. I'm talking to people. I'm obviously irritating them, so I'm winning some, some to some extent. I mean, why do I... I don't need this fucking advice shit. You know, unless you've got some kind of real advice. Well, just you find one thing and just chase the one thing. Well, whatever. I'm sorry to be insulting, but it's just a pile of crap. How do you know the one thing is the best place to, to waste my time? I mean, like I said, how do you know that's the, 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 the dice I should roll? I mean, you're saying shake the dice, 
with them behind your head and then blow on them and then say butterfly as you throw them. Well, I, maybe I don't think that's the way to throw the dice. Maybe there's some other fucking way to throw the dice. I, I just, I'm not convinced. I'm trying to make a little bit of difference. I've tried See, I hate that little bit of difference crap because it just doesn't add up to anything. You know what I mean? I'll, see, I'll give you another now. This, this metaphor I've used all the time, nobody ever, I mean, I don't get any positive response from it. But look, it's like you're standing on a hill. And on one side of the hill you can see a z million acres of, of we beautiful wheat. And on the other side of the hill are millions of starving people. And, and you're sitting there, and, and these you're saying, you have to go up to each one of these individual people and explain to them, just climb up the hill, asshole. There's a whole bunch of weed over there, you fucker. And it's like, yeah, that's getting somewhere. I mean, you're saving one person at a time. But sitting there, you're just saying, no, this guy, give me a, somebody, give me a megaphone, give me something, give me some way to make the millions get it and move over the fucking hill. I, I might only save one person when I, when I want to cure the fucking disease. I want to fix the whole fucking problem. And that's the sort of place we're in here. Or it's like the malaria example. You could spend money on, on nets and, and, and uh, insecticide and all that kind of stuff to, to, to treat the poor victims now. Or you can spend money on research to create a cure for the disease. And then which is the better expenditure? Where where should where would the where does logic say spend the money? And unfortunately, I think unfortunately for the um, the emotional side of the human race, the emotional side says, okay, I can see the bleeding victims now. And but the intellectual side says, no, this is what you got to you got to invest in fixing the future. So, you know, you, you invest in the cure. To do that by joining the church, and that didn't work because all they ever did was moan about which hymn they were going to have. Oh, petty, trivial arguments which made me sick. That's how it was in my experience of the church. So, I don't go anymore. So, I think you'll find most people are seeking yeah, I need to hear a phone call. <laughs> it's simple enough. So thanks for the video. So it was fun.